Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we'll be looking at cross-site scripting. So it is a way for us to actually inject our own malicious script into the web browser so that when the user serve it, we can actually show them exactly what we want the browser to do. So of course, before we even go into cross-site scripting, we want to think about what is JavaScript and how do web developers actually build many of these sites. So the first thing you can think about is developers actually have to look at HTML, CSS, as well as JavaScript that can give the user a great experience when they're surfing into the site. And of course, in this case, JavaScript is actually used to control a lot of functions inside the website. So when we look over here, we have a standard, very simple way of building a HTML document that can be served through a web application server. So web application server could be like Apache that you have seen a lot from the tutorials. So on the right side, we can see over here that we got the HTML opening and we got the body and we got the H1, which is standing for header, header one. And we got script. So script is of course JavaScript and we'll be inserting a lot of this over time. So here we got the alert function. So the alert function will do a dialog box pop up. And the reason why we're using this is because it is a lot more visible to know whether your script has actually gone in successfully. So that's one of the way, especially in the beginning stage when you're trying to do all this injection and to see whether the text form or the URL is actually subjected to JavaScript injection. And of course on the bottom left, how is actually the JavaScript being used across all these different browsers. So you got Chrome, you got Internet Explorer, you got Firefox, Safari, and Opera. So all of them can run the script. So if they can run the script, it means that we can inject something into the web server, which allow us to run our own commands. So moving forward, if you see over here, we got the screenshot of running a HTML page. So again, you could run this on your own web application server. So you just gotta upload the HTML file to your Apache web server. And from there on, you'll be able to see all of this running inside your system. And it can just go into the IP address and we can see whether the browsers are loading exactly what we want them to load. So of course, going into cross-site scripting now. So it is a web-based attack in which the browser interpreter, which is used to execute malicious code, that does not sanitize input. So if you look back at the previous tutorial, we were talking about SQL injection. So it is almost similar, but in this case, the code is targeted for the browser, targeted for the user when they click onto it, when they go into the page. And of course the script would actually run onto the browser and execute the kind of commands that we wanted to run into. Whereas SQL injection that you saw from the previous tutorial was actually to pull out a lot of information coming from the database through the web application server because of, again, unsanitized input they did not check for the kind of code is coming into the system so what can cross-site scripting do now that we understand about cross-site scripting how web application or web development is being built so it can execute any kind of script that we want to run as the hacker and we can deface the site we can change the code we can redirect users who go into the site and of course, we can even hijack the user's browser. So a lot more things that we can do because if you can inject your own script into the system, you can do literally anything. So there are three key types of cross-site scripting. So the first one is actually what we call stored. So stored cross-site scripting is a very simple way of how we could push the script into the database. So once it's in the database, what happened is that when the web browser serves the content, it will be served as a JavaScript. So once it is served as a JavaScript, the user's browser will load those scripts and immediately will be able to get those information back. The second one is reflected. So of course, this is the part where we're utilizing the URL in which we're injecting our script inside the URL, sending to the user, and when the user click onto it, it loads into the browser and then ultimately into our script. And when a script runs, immediately we'll be able to run that script against the client's browser. And the final one is DOM-based cross-site scripting. So this is the document object model. So this is a way for us to do an inline execution of script. So this is very browser specific. So a lot of the more outdated browsers can be subjected to this type of attack. So the first scenario is on stored cross-site scripting, which is the simplest way to look at cross-site scripting. 
So the first thing you look at is on the left side, you got the hacker server or the hacker's computer. And it will inject a code, a malicious code into the target server. And ultimately, when the user go into the server, that will execute a script immediately. And you'll be able to do all sorts of commands you saw earlier. Redirection, getting cookies information, sensitive data, and so on. So where are the entry points for attack? So if you look on the left side, we have a vulnerable web application server that you've seen a lot come out today. So you could actually install this very quickly on your virtual environment. And from there on, you can actually test and learn about SQL injection, cross-site scripting, vulnerabilities, and a lot more things. So of course, in this case, we are inside a particular page and this page has a text form. So of course, in the text form, we can see that we can key in things. So this is the part where we can do a entry. So if you think about the sites that you're surfing, this is like a text box and you can put your comments and you can put different kind of things. So on the right side, we are injecting a script, a JavaScript into the system. So when we're injecting the JavaScript, so here we have the opening of script and we got a closing and we got an alert. And the alert say you've been hacked. So what happened is that once you hit save block entry, whoever loads into the page would actually load the JavaScript. So on the left side, you could see the pop-up dialog box. And we can see that you've been hacked gets shown up. And of course, on the right side, if you actually investigate on the source code, you could actually do a search and you could see script alert you've been hacked, which means that the script is running as though it is a script out of the browser. So this allow you to actually run your own code like redirecting the whole page, meaning that if you reach this page, you can redirect it to your correct site. So here we got another way of actually attacking based on cross-site scripting. So over here, we are injecting an iframe on the left side. So again, this is a way for us to embed content into the site. So on the right side, we can see that we got the website loaded into the site. So over here, you can see transferring data from. So this would actually embed the site into the iframe. Again, ultimately allowing us to embed information, any form of content into the table. So over here, we have another example where we are using a script alert document.cookie. So we're trying to pull out the cookie information of the client browser. So again, this allows us to see information inside the browser. So this would actually give a pop-up. So in the pop-up, we can see the PHP session ID. So again, we could use the, such session ID information and we can copy it to a different browser and this would give us permission into the site. So scenario two is a little more complicated. So we have what we call the reflected cross-site scripting. So reflected cross-site scripting is in a sense that if you look at the step over here, on the top left, we have the hacker server computer. And what they're first doing is they're going into the target server and they're checking whether this server is vulnerable to URL injection. So what they'll do is they will test the URL to see if that they are able to inject script inside the URL and then sending that link to the target machine. So when a target machine clicks onto the link to gather with the script injected in the URL, that would get a malicious script executed. So over here, in this case, you can see on the left side, we have the script alert document.cookie. So we could send such an information or the URL link to the target machine. And when the target machine click onto the link, it would actually run the script. So in this case, of course, we're just running the document.cookie, which will, of course, show the PHP session ID. But of course, we can also send that information to a separate server to collect all this session information. So again, this is part of cookie stealing, as we can see. So over here, we got the browser-specific attack. So on the left side, we can actually see the file. And of course, in the file, you could serve this through any of your favorite web application server. And we can actually do a question mark name equal. So again, that would help us inject the content or the information into the body of the website. So of course, at the bottom, you can actually see that we're injecting the script or alert. And of course, you've seen it many times through the different earlier examples. And of course, we can see the dialog box being popped up saying that this site says hacked. So of course, this is highly dependent on the browser because some browser would actually sanitize those input for you to protect you. But of course, if you're using more outdated browsers, it will actually subject you to this kind of script being executed on your client end. 
So of course you'll be asking, what about more advanced way? Because there could be web application firewall to sanitize those input. There could be a database firewall to sanitize those input before it gets injected into the database. So again, they could have many different kind of firewalls to protect against such payload. So of course, there's a huge set of cheat sheets or payloads in which you could see on the right side. So we got different ways of injecting the alert to test whether the site is vulnerable to such attacks. So you can see embed source, image source, script source, and we got the DIV, and of course we got question mark and so on. So there's a huge list of potential ways that we could inject the payload into the web server to test whether they are vulnerable to such attacks. So now we're going to the demonstration of the tutorial. And here, this is the part where we are looking across all three examples of how cross-site scripting works. So over here on the left side, I have Kalix running. And at the same time, I have Mutiliday running as well on the IP address of 192.168.1.85. So once you're in here, you can go under OWAP's top 10. So they have a nice category of the web application vulnerabilities that you could test on. And of course, today's coverage is on cross-site scripting. So of course, in future tutorial, we'll try to go through as many of them as possible so that you can learn all about cybersecurity. So when going to cross-site scripting, we can actually look at the number of opportunities that we can test on. So of course, we got the reflected, we got the persistent. So we're going to click on to add to your block. So once you click on to add to your block, this is the part where we can actually enter any form of content. So I'll say, for example, I enter, hello, today is a great day. And I hit enter on that, so that would save a block entry. And at the bottom, we can see that we got the entry, hello, today is a great day. So what we can do now is we can manipulate the data. So here, for example, we can enter script, and we can enter alert, and we can enter you bin hack and we can actually close it and we can close the script as well. So once you hit this, whoever goes into the web page and once they're in the web page, the will load the JavaScript and of course this dialog box will pop up. But of course in some malicious cases, it could be a redirection of page, it could be a stealing of document cookies, so it could be many of these potential examples. So you click on save block entry and immediately we can see the pop-up coming out and it says that you've been hacked. So of course in our case, this we can actually go under login and we can try to log in as a separate user. So in this case, I log in as a separate user and I go in to the cross-site scripting and I go to persistent and I click on view someone's block. So of course over here, we can for a lot of different information. So I can click on show all and I can click view block entries and immediately I get the JavaScript being executed because this is part of the entry of the user by anonymous. So if I actually click on right click and I click on view page source and of course I can look for the script and of course we can look for the alert and we can look at you being hacked and of course here immediately and if you're familiar with HTML and CSS, we can see that this is a table format. And in the table format, we have an alert of JavaScript. So here it says script alert you've been hacked. So immediately from here, we can actually see the information coming out and we are able to see that you've been hacked. So again, we are running on this JavaScript. So now we go back into OOPS top 10, cross-site scripting, persistent, add to your block. So we'll click on that. And again, we can actually look at how we could inject content into the table so of course if you scroll down you can see that there are no block entries and what we can do is we can actually enter exactly what you saw from the lecture earlier we can look at iframe so iframe again is another way for us to potentially inject such script into the system so in this case we got source and we can enter http followed by the website that you want to actually put into the system so of course in this case we got iframe source and we got loyliangyang.com and we can of course close the iframe as well so here again we are following the instructions directly from the lecture so we can close the iframe and we can enter safe entry so once you hit enter on that we can see the loading on the left side and of course as you scroll down we can see the website being loaded into the block entry so once again demonstrating how we could inject some of this information into the site so over here, we actually have the ability also to inject script. So of course here, we have another example about how we could do a DNS lookup on. 
So again, we could also inject script once again. So in this case, we can enter, for example, alert document.cookie, and we can click on lookup DNS. So of course, this would immediately show us the PHP session ID, the username, as well as the UID. So of course, what we can do is we can redirect all this data to a different site, to a different server, and immediately we'll be able to get those session information. So over here, we actually got DVWA, which is a vulnerable web application. So in this case, we can also inject it directly from the URL. So in this case, when you see over here, is you can enter, what's your name? So I can enter admin, for example, and I click submit, and it says, hello admin. So what you notice is on the URL. The URL actually specify information over here, and it says that name equal admin followed by hex. So what we can do is we can follow the information that we got earlier from the lecture slide. And what we can do is we can enter the script directly into the URL. So in this case, I can enter the script. Again, we can check whether this particular URL is going to be vulnerable to different kind of JavaScript. And then we can inject all this information when we're sending the URL link to the user. So in this case, I'm entering alert and I can enter hacked. And of course, we can close the alert and hit enter on that and immediately we get a dialog pop up. So the reason we are doing this is because the URL is legitimate. And because it's a legitimate URL, the user has a higher chance of clicking to it. And when they click onto it, it would execute all this Java code. So on the left side, I have a Windows 10 computer running. And of course, in this case, we got the DOM.html. So remember earlier from the lecture slide, we actually have the code here, which is a HTML file that you could serve into any of your web application servers. So over here, of course, you can take a screenshot so that you could actually quickly copy the code and write it into your computer or if you want to host it on your application server. So please go ahead and do that right now. So once you have it, you can close it and you can just double click on it and it will open on any of your favorite browser. And of course, all you got to do at the back is enter question mark followed by name equal LOI. So again, we can specify and change any of those information so you can see specifically how this actually changed the content inside the browser. So of course, ultimately, what we can do is we can inject the script into the system. So over here, we can enter script and we have the alert on hack followed by the closing of the script. So when you hit enter on that, that would immediately do a dialog box pop up. So ultimately giving us access into the sensitive content inside the browser. So once again, I hope you have learned something valuable in today's tutorial as well as lecture. So of course, if you have any questions, feel free to put a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.